another episode of Adventure People and Places. We head south on Ruta 14, Argentina. We see some amazingly weird animals, visit the hand of the caves, and the enormous glacier at Perito Marino. Let's go. We've turned south on Ruta 40 um, after crossing the border a few days ago and a chill time in the campsite. And we are now heading through a very different landscape. The greens have disappeared and it's all brown and yellow and it's very, very dry. Much drier than what we used to in the last few days. Oh, and there's Rias. I can't, I can't stop. Or you can turn around and stop on the other side. It's the first ones we've seen that hasn't been up behind the fence. Yeah, and lots and lots of babies. Sorry for interruption, but we just spotted some rias. A very strange, ugly little mm, mini um, ostrich-like um, animal. So we're just quickly going to turn around and go and have a look at them. Um, and then t tomorrow we are heading to the Cuevas Los Manos, the caves of the hands. Uh, where we're gonna see if we can do a tour. them because they ran away at a speed. See now they're trying to get through the wire. That's through. Oh gosh. We lost focus. We're causing chaos in the animal kingdom here. As you can hear it's very very windy. Something we'll have to get used to over the next few weeks. We also started seeing Gonarchus, an animal of the llama family that lives at lower altitudes and that can survive in very dry climates. They have a wide range and cannot be domesticated. On this route we saw hundreds of gunakos that have gotten stuck in fences and have died. We noticed that they would run off as soon as they hear a vehicle, so we did our best not to scare them. We never saw one getting stuck while driving, so we think it only happens in the dark. Another reason not to drive at night in Patagonia. Then we headed off the tarmac road and drove through the Perito Marino National Park to get to our next destination. On the way we saw many guanaco, and here they were a lot less skittish but still quite nervous when we stopped. We had the privilege of sighting many adolescents and babies on this drive. We were also lucky enough to have two separate sightings of the Patagonia Grey Fox. What a spectacular day on the road. It was a very corrugated road, but well worth the drive. By late afternoon, we dropped down into the Pinturas River Canyon and found a place to sleep right next to the road, about 500 meters outside the archaeological site. Ready to head down the next morning for the first tour to the Cave of the Hands or Cuevo de las Manos. We are at the caves, the caves of Los Manos, and there are lots of, lots of um, paintings and drawings, but the most popular one is of the hands, that they actually put their hand against the rock and then glue some of the ink on it to um, actually get the image. So let me show you. Okay, I think I might have to go now, but these are the hands lots of them and then also guanacos and then there's a huge cave here um probably where they stayed i'm not allowed to walk on the red line can you see the guanacos there in the center in red so it is pretty amazing to think that some of these drawings are over 9,000 years old and all these hands, I mean this one overlapping a guanaco and um, they depicted how they hunted them 
the animal says Franco is black. The bottom, there's some more here. Yeah. And they, the colors are from different minerals. The different colors are different colored minerals, and then they just mix it with water. Um, this is also a different style. I think they said these are a bit older. And then the woman would actually come and reinforce the drawings. Most of the handprints are left handed. And they are a few that's right handed. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Let's move on. Here's something else as well. Over there. Yeah, then beautiful view. The rock itself, a bit of a mushroom shape. So the drawings are on the inside. It looks like it's been carved away by erosion. And obviously this was also the cave where the people slept in. Uh, really beautiful. I have a bit of a golden gate feeling here. There was an enormous condor perched high up on a rock pinnacle above the Cave of the Hands, catching the morning sun and watching over us during the visit. What a privilege to see such wildlife in Patagonia. Then we headed further south on to our next destination, looking to find a spot out of the wind to sleep that night. We also started seeing more vans and overlanders as everybody was heading south. We parked next to another Toyota high ace that night, this one from Switzerland. And welcome to El Calafate. We keep seeing the same guy driving this road on his, um, Harley, on his Harley Davidson. <laughs> Interesting roads for Harley, but anyway, yeah. So, welcome to El Calafate. Fate. On our way to Glacier Perito Marino, it's been windy, it's been a lovely drive and in preparation for visiting the glacier we are going to the Glacier Museum and the ice bar just to get us into the icy mood and to learn a bit about glaciers and how they form. Looks like a very touristy town. Suddenly there's loads of people. We've only been driving through like one horse towns for the last maybe seven, eight hundred k's and suddenly it is traffic. Yeah. We even saw a racetrack. But yeah, let's head off to the Glaceromium or Glaceramium. In the museum we got a much better understanding of the extent of the ice fields and the effect of global warming and how glaciers were formed. So what did you think of that museum? Glacier, we caught a quick glimpse of a very rare animal, the Molino Hogno skunk, also called the Andean skunk or Zorito in Spanish. They are very shy but quite aggressive little animals. We also saw some lesser rhea and a smaller family of the greater rhea. Very good morning from our busiest wild camp ever. We slept next to a little stream last night just outside Perito Marino glacier and we are surrounded by overlanders. It's the first time that we had to go to two, three different um, camping spots before we could find space because there is so many people here. It's really like a traffic jam of travelers and tourists all sleeping in their vehicles wanting to sleep as close as possible to the park so we get there early. Karin is just up, busy making porridge. We've just had a cup of coffee and we are slowly defrosting. The birds are out. 
but not much else. And if you listen carefully, there's no wind. So let's have our breakfast and head off to see the glacier. First, we're not sure if it's officially an iceberg, but it is a big piece of the glacier. Uh, we are floating in the lake as we are slowly approaching the glacier through a very nice drive. We have arrived at the Trecho Marino Glacier, first of the many big crowds as they are streaming in. It is really, really cold here by the glacier. Although the sun is out, there is a freezing. It is a more inspiring sight. Well, the wheelchair accessibility is also fantastic. And it's well maintained. Let's go. going up, but it's lots of fun going down. We spend the whole day at Barita Marino Glacier, walking around and looking at nature's show of power through water and ice. Every now and then a piece would break off. Sometimes you would hear it, and if you were quick enough, you would see it. It was such an amazing place to visit and I would highly recommend it if you're ever visiting Patagonia. We end this episode with a time lapse showing the play of the sun on the glacier. In our Where are we going? There is Alpine. For Karin to go and do some hike. Oh, we've made it. Ah, the last stretch was a bit hard. That's a story for another time. Please head over to patreon.com forward slash feelers on four wheels to subscribe and get these videos first and view them ad free. Or like and subscribe this video to support our channel. Thank you for watching.